in the things you see here, there are a couple of things that are full fuse, but almost all of them never went beyond 1,350 degrees. That's attack fuse temperature. As you're working on your design, you want to think about both your glass and whether you want it to be realistic um, for the element, and, but also each of these has an ugly spot in the middle. So how are you going to cover your ugly spot in the middle? Um, this one apparently has a fried egg in the middle of it. This one here has uh, just a little pile of frit. Again, tack fuse to maintain the texture. This one here, we made the ugly spot part of the design. So think about that when you're laying out your, um, your flowers. The molds can be have, have they're set up for specific uses. This one, for example, is really quite specific. This is the bottom of the iris. You know, you're not going to find a lot of different ways to use that, but something like this can be used to create one of these flowers right here. That's made on that mold. It was also used to make one of the one of the layers of the lily, or you could, you know, anything you can imagine. This mold, for example, is um, just a shaper. You can use it any way you want. You can use it to make the leaves. Now, I didn't use it for these because they were too long. But these little grassy leaves right here are slumped over this mold. You know, face it one way, face it another way, you get completely different effects. One of the other things that they've created is these texture molds. This one is for a, a, like a grass leaf vein, and they also have one that I've used for the lily pet pad here that's like a tree, you know, like branching veins. Um, way fun to play around with. If you look at the, the, the leaves in these little lilies right here, you'll see that I did that with iridized glass, and it really brings out the little, the little um, textures on that. The lily pad, I just took a circle of glass. You can see the, from the bottom the shape that I cut it. This was floating in someone's pond, too, a little while ago. It's still got water on it. And then just sprinkle a little frit to get a little texture. And then put it on the texturizing mold. And again, just tack fuse it. 1,350 degrees. And I, I still have that nice, smooth, thin shape. I get some texture. I get some color. It isn't really glossy, shiny. But it ends up looking an awful lot like a lily pad, I think. Tap. This is a hand tap. They're available at Lowe's or wherever. They're not very expensive. You're going to spend maybe 12 bucks for the, the handle. And then this is a separate element called a tap. This is a um, 1224. The 12 refers to the diameter of the tap, the 24 to the threading of the screws. And I used it to thread my pipe. Basically, just line it up here. Copper tubing, quarter inch copper tubing. Um, you can get that again at Lowe's, 10 bucks, 10 bucks for 10 feet. Not a very expensive, copper's expensive, but not a terribly expensive element. This uh, hand tap is, what it's doing is it's actually threading the inside of this tube. And all I have to do is turn it. It's not difficult to turn at all. Don't do it twice. Once you've threaded it, don't try threading it again. You won't be able to line up the threads and you won't be able to use it. Just cut that end off. It all the way through and I'm just unscrewing this. But I don't always have that kind of luck. So I often have to drill them. That's a good way to break your glass, by the way. So if, you're, if you decide you're going to take up drilling, do it on some scrap glass first and then expect and then make several extra flowers. But tap this out now. I, I will then take my flower. I will take a piece of felt. Now cut it into a little circle, and I will use it as a washer. You're going to see that on these flowers here at the base of the flower. On the, on the iris, I put a, wa a felt washer between the two pieces so that they will um, be cushioned from any vibration. But then I'm going to take that screw that I just had in my hand. I'm just going to you know, thread it through my flower, through my, my washers. After I've assembled my flower, I'm going to tighten that screw in. Here's another great place to break your flower because if you over tighten it, it will break. So don't tighten up the screw till it's stiff enough that the flower doesn't wobble when you go like this. Okay? Cut the tubing off to the length you want it. This is a tubing cutter. If you've never used one, they're really kind of cool. Interesting idea. Nothing difficult about it. 
there's a sharp wheel right here, and there are two little rubber wheels right here. I'm going to take my copper tubing, I'm going to put it over the two rubber, rubber wheels, and then I'm going to tighten this little hand uh, tightener here until the sharp wheel comes down and it's held snugly in between. Then tighten it till it's as tight, you know, not so that it squishes the two, but till it's hand tight. I turn this, tighten it again, turn it again, tighten it. Every time I turn, every time I turn this this way, I'm going to tighten that and my tubing falls Magic. Off. It is. It's just like magic. And then Val, that is one way of attaching these flowers together. And you can make variations on that. This particular flower <clears throat> is attached the same way that I just demonstrated, using copper tubing and a screw, and then we've added flower or leaves. These are just, the leaves are fused in the kiln with copper wire. Two, two layers of thin, uh, thin are fused together with copper wire between them. The wire is twisted and just wrapped around the flower. Not particularly of <clears throat> making your flowers is this one. This is very simple. It doesn't have a stem. It's just glued. So each of these layers is glued. They're all, the, the, the three layers of the flower are fused separately. The, the leaf is fused separately. They're all glued together. We use E6000, this stuff right here. Okay, works great. E6000 has the advantage that it's kind of thick so that it will bridge. You've got some small gaps, so it brings together these uneven pieces. And the uh, way of doing this, and these two are actually similar, is I just used a very, very fine copper wire, threaded it through the flower, and you can really see it on these little guys. I just threaded it through the flower, and then using a pair of pliers, I twisted it to make a little flowerette. You can send these little... Um, several pieces of wire just brought up, twisted into a little knot, and then wrapped around and wrapped and wrapped in different thicknesses of wire and different thicknesses of pipe to um, 